What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade but today we are going to be discussing the extremely bizarre case of Joey Lynn Offit, her disappearance and several other crimes that happened surrounding it. I first saw and became interested in Joey Lynn's story when I saw her disappeared episode when it aired many years ago. It was called Little Girl Lost and that name just rang so true for me. This was the first ever true crime video I ever did uh, over a year ago and I've come pretty far since then I like to think and I decided to reboot it because I want to do justice for this family. I want to help bring it. I have a more concise and easily understandable script. I have new information. I have everything in order instead of jumping around. Well, I did not contact the family to do this video. I just wanted to say that most of the information I got came from public record and the disappeared episode, which the family was involved in. So I just want anyone to know that I approach these cases with the utmost respect and try to give dignity to the victims. My prayers, peace, love, and hope for justice, as always, go out to Joey and her family. Please bear with me as I reboot this. I know I can do a better job than I did the last time. With all of that being said, thank you so much for allowing me to do this. Joey Lynn Offit was a 32-year-old mother of three. She had a nine-year-old daughter from a previous relationship than the one we're going to be discussing today in this video. I couldn't find any information at all about that child's father or what that relationship entailed, how it ended, etc. The father of her other daughter was a man named Alexis Brolin Jr. And he is the significant other partner, fiance, boyfriend we're going to be discussing throughout this case. I'm pretty sure they were engaged at the time of her disappearance. Joey and Alexis, by all accounts, had a pretty rocky and tumultuous relationship. Joey was developmentally delayed where even though she was a grown woman, her mentality was that of a 14 or 15 year old teenager. Alexis, as far as I know, and as far as what's been reported, did not have any developmental delays or any kind of delays or anything like that. So right from the door, this made me wonder what a grown man was doing, having a relationship and even kids with essentially a teenager and a 14 year old at that. That might come back into play later though, so hold that thought. The couple lived together in an apartment in State College, Pennsylvania with Joey's oldest daughter and her and Alexis's daughter as well. There's a lot of vague reporting in this case and not a lot of details and a lot of things where I wish I knew more so I could understand and report more to you. So something happened that broke the two of them up and it had to do with Alexis's older son from his previous relationship and Joey took the two girls and moved out. She went to Virginia to live with her sister for about a year before returning to Pennsylvania where Alexis and also her mother were. Joey's mom was kind of tired of watching Joey bounce around with the kids from place to place and wanted her daughter and her grandchildren close to her all the time. She was so relieved to finally have them back from Virginia that she decided to purchase a home for Joey and the two girls so that she could kind of make it on her own and not have to worry at least ever about having a place to live again. This home was in Sykesville, Pennsylvania. Alexis and Joey got back together around this time as well and were even planning on getting married but decided it would be for the best if they maintained separate residences just for the time being. So Alexis was not going to be moving into Joey's new home that her mother had purchased for her and the kids at least not right away. They had a pretty nasty breakup and therefore were taking it very slowly. Joey went missing in July of 2007 and it's still unsolved in August of 2021. It's absolutely insane and very confusing and just so very heartbreaking and frustrating that there isn't even a hint or a clue as to what could have happened here or where Joey could possibly be, although I have my ideas, which that's exactly what they are, ideas and opinions, as no one has been charged with anything, convicted of anything definitely in this case. Joey ended up getting pregnant with another of Alexis's kids and when she finally gave birth, it was a baby boy. She decided she wanted when she came home from the hospital to just spend some time alone with just her and the newborn baby. I totally get that. Just that bonding time, and especially she had two older children and you really need your rest after giving birth. While yes, newborn babies are demanding in a whole different way, they do sleep a lot. And I think Joey just wanted some time to spend with her son and to just escape for a little bit and get some peace and quiet and rest. Pregnancy can be very stressful and remember she was technically and mentality only 14 years old and giving birth to her third child. 
She sent her oldest daughters to go and stay with her mother for a little while so she could have this time again with her baby boy. Some sources reported that Joey and Alexis's daughter went with Alexis and her other daughter went with her mother, but it's more widely reported and I think it's more accurate that both girls went with their grandmother, Joey's mom. Joey was described by her mother and those closest to her as being incredibly naive and immature. She was way too trusting and pretty much believed anything that anyone told her and never questioned anyone's intentions or motives. She had a lot of trouble holding down jobs, didn't have many, if any, meaningful friendships or relationships, and aside from Alexis, hadn't been able to hold on to any long-term romantic relationships either. I decided in this case to just roll with the timeline of events because it just seemed to be easiest at this point because the information here is all over the place. So here it is, the bizarre, crazy, insane, and very, very heartbreaking and sad disappearance of Joey Lynn Offit. On July 3rd, 2007, according to Alexis Brolin Jr., Joey's fiance and the father of her newborn son, had an argument while at Joey's new house that day. Alexis says that while they're visiting Joey and the baby, who they named Alexis Brolin III, Joey was attempting to bathe the baby in the kitchen sink, but hadn't cleaned it out first. He said he told her straight out that he didn't appreciate her bathing their newborn in a dirty sink, and he claims he asked her if she would please clean the sink out first before bathing their son. By the way, the little boy's nickname was Lex, so that's how I will be referring to him from here on out to distinguish between him and his father, who I am calling Alexis. Because she was so young in her mind and immature, Joey had a really hard time handling even the smallest criticisms and took it very personally as an insult and seemed very injured and hurt by Alexis's observation about the sink being dirty. He claims he just wanted to give her some time to cool off because she had a kind of explosive temper, and this really seemed to set her off. He figured he would either reach out later on or she would come to him eventually when she was ready. This wasn't an uncommon thing. It happened all the time. Them fighting and Joey losing her temper and needing her space to clear her head and cool off. So Alexis left the house during the fight and left Joey and the baby there. The next day, which was the 4th of July, when Joey repeatedly failed to answer his phone calls, despite them having plans to get together, Alexis simply assumed she was still angry with him. She was known to shut down like this, and though he tried repeatedly, he just couldn't get a hold of her that day. On July 5th, however, when Joey still wasn't answering him, he decided to go to the house and knock on the door. It's not so much he was worried, but it was a bit unusual for Joey to have still been so angry as to not answer him at all two days later. However, there was no answer to his knocking either. There seemed to be nobody home. Later on during the investigation, a neighbor of Joey's came forward and reported that they had seen Joey on this day, July 5th, which was two days after anyone else had seen or heard from her. The neighbor said that Joey was pushing a stroller down the street, but that they clearly remembered this because when they greeted Joey and said hello, Joey, who was usually so outgoing, trusting, and friendly, didn't say anything in return and continued walking while pushing the stroller right on by them. When asked if they could confirm if there was a baby in the stroller Joey was pushing, the neighbor said they could not. This was weird to me because when you know your neighbor who you're friendly enough with to say hi has a newborn baby, don't you want to be like, oh, let me see the baby? This was all just very weird. This is actually reported as the last official sighting of Joey, but later on you'll see it actually hasn't been confirmed really. It's just what the neighbor said they had seen and could have been mistaken about the date. Another thing that struck me personally as odd was this, how could the neighbor not know if there was a baby in the stroller? Again, don't you want to see the baby? Don't you just see the baby while walking by? I mean, here is this person's neighbor who was pregnant when she moved in. They obviously knew her, like I just said. I don't know, guys. I know it's reaching, but this is just something that struck me as very odd and is making my brain kind of tingle, my spidey sense, my jemmy sense, right? The next day on July 6, 2007, a nurse from a state home health agency who was assigned to check in on Joey and little Lex called Alexis and informed him that she was at Joey's house for a scheduled visit, which she had already confirmed with Joey while she was in the hospital and nobody was answering the door for her. So I'm pretty sure this was a mandated visit. So it was in Joey's best interest to answer the door for this woman, even if she was still angry for whatever reason with Alexis. So this was kind of concerning. This nurse also said that she was using her cell phone from the front porch to try and call while she was there, but she wasn't receiving any type of answer there either. There was no movement at all in the house because she did look through the windows that were accessible from the porch and saw a diaper bag and car seat sitting next to the front door. She told Alexis that Joey's car was parked out front of the house, not in the driveway, but it was definitely there 
and that there was mail piling up at the front door. Alexis said he was growing more and more concerned as each day passed and he decided to go back to Joey's house on the 7th. This is now four days since anyone, not just Alexis, has seen or heard from Joey aside from that weird alleged account from the neighbor, which I'm not even counting. She even blew off plans with him for the 4th of July, which he was now starting to think more about when he had simply blown it off as Herschel being angry when it had happened in the first place. Alexis once again got no answer when he knocked on the door and no answer when he called the house. He claims, however, that when he went there on the 7th, Joey's car was nowhere in sight. Not in the front of the house where the home health aide had just seen it the day before and not in the driveway where it was last seen by him a few days ago. On July 8th, after once again receiving no answer while at Joey's house, Alexis leaves a note on the front door for when she comes back because now he's angry, right? He thinks she's taking this whole thing, bathing in the dirty sink thing and her stubbornness way too far and decides he's going to threaten her with calling the police if she doesn't get back to him within 24 hours, at least to let him know that she and the baby are okay. So this is what the note basically says when he leaves it for her taped to the front door. On this day, July 8th, the car is parked back in front of the house. So if we believe what Alexis is reporting of what's been happening these past few days as everyone is trying to get a hold of Joey, someone is definitely at least moving her car back and forth. From July 9th through July 10th, Alexis and Joey's mother call Joey's house nonstop for these two days, but nobody answers the phone or calls back. Why hasn't anyone thought to report Joey missing at this point is completely beyond me, but moving on to July 12th, 2007, this would be five days after the neighbor saw her, but nine days since the argument with Alexis. That's quite a long time, in my opinion, for a young lady with special needs and a very newborn baby left in her care to just be missing and for nobody who cares for her to be doing anything about it. Especially her mother has at least one of her other children and can't get a hold of her for some earplugs for that child. The child had a very bad ear issue where she couldn't even take a bath without earplugs and Joey was supposed to send them out the first day the daughter left to go with her grandmother but they had never arrived. This is also a lot more cause for concern in my opinion as Joey really did love and care for her children by all accounts despite her irrational behavior and immaturity. They claim that it was mainly because of her pattern of behavior with the, her stubbornness to forgive and let go of grudges that despite being concerned, they didn't want to make a big deal out of nothing and upset her even more. So everyone's walking on eggshells. So on the morning of July 13th at around 4.30 a.m., Joey's neighbors heard a loud explosion coming from her house. When they looked out the window to see what was going on, they saw her home was completely engulfed in flames and called 911. Witnesses would come out and tell the investigators that at around 3 a.m. they saw Joey's car parked out in front of her house. This was very important, not only because of how the car kept randomly reappearing and disappearing in the days of Joey's disappearance since she was last seen, but because when the fire department and police showed up to the fire a few minutes after being alerted to it, Joey's car was not in front of the house or anywhere else in sight. It had been moved. It was gone. The firefighters and police determined that the fire was started by an unknown accelerant and it was started on purpose. This was now not only a missing person, but an arson investigation as well. Later on that day, July 13th, Alexis finally decides it's time to go and file a missing persons report on Joey and newborn Lex. And I just want to say it's been reported in some places this was the 12th and some places the 13th. I'm rolling with the 13th. This is when he receives the devastating news that not only was the house burned to the ground in an apparent arson, but that the remains of his six week old son, Alexis Brolin III, were found in the bathtub of the home. Joey's remains were never found and she is still missing to this day in August of 2021. And an autopsy will later determine that little Lex was deceased before he was burned in the fire. I know guys, this is not only heartbreaking, but so incredibly confusing and mysterious. It gets much more so though, so just try and stay with me here. I found it a bit strange that nobody had contacted or gotten in touch with Alexis about the fire at the very least, let alone the, the discovery of infant remains in the home. He must have known the neighbors because he was there constantly and seemed to have been the emergency contact for at least the home health aide instead of Joey's mother. In the investigation that followed Joey's disappearance and what looked like the murder of the infant and also the arson, some things came out about Joey and her and Alexis's relationship that were cause for some concern. Her own mother came out and admitted to investigators that the year before, in 2006, Joey had in fact fallen prey to a possible online sexual predator and she had to step in and take action. 
Sherry, Joey's mother, talked about how she was granted temporary custody of Joey's two daughters after it was discovered that she was communicating online with a man from California who had Joey convinced he was a photographer who wanted her to model for him and eventually he asked her to possibly engage in some pornography as well. In the interview, I kind of got a weird feeling about what Sherry said next about Joey. She was saying how though her daughter was a beautiful soul, she right away found this guy suspicious when Joey mentioned him because her daughter wasn't anywhere near model material. I don't know whether it be true or not. I found that a bit harsh to be saying out loud and publicly about your missing and possibly deceased daughter. But I guess she was just trying to explain how all of this came about with her getting the temporary custody and all that. So anyways, Sherry said she was very concerned that this guy was some kind of online predator who knew Joey had two young daughters and maybe he was trying to get in with Joey so he could eventually have access to her young girls, her daughters. So she filed the paperwork for temporary custody and won. Joey did not take this well. After learning her kids were being taken and sent to live with her mother, she allegedly, quote, threw a violent fit, end quote, and had to be escorted out of her home in handcuffs by the police. Joey had to undergo counseling before she could regain custody of her kids back, which she eventually did, and made up with her mother. So let's talk theories. The Internet Predator. As I pretty much just stated, Joey had fallen just a year previous to her disappearance, prey to an internet predator who was possibly grooming her to get closer to her two young daughters. Did she possibly meet someone online and give them her address and personal information, leaving her open to some kind of abduction or possibly even sex trafficking? Was she stalked in some way by someone she gave too much information to online? We have to always keep in mind here that Joey was not your average and typical 32 year old mother of three. She was essentially a 14 year old girl and thought like one too. We see all the time, especially in this community, young teenage girls being groomed by predators online. At first, I leaned very heavily towards this being what could have possibly happened to Joey. However, once I dug a bit deeper into my research, I found out that for months before the disappearance and fire, basically since she moved into this new home, Joey's internet was disconnected in her home due to non-payment of bill. I'm also positive that while cell phones were definitely getting more popular back in 2007, smartphones with internet access were not readily available to just anyone back then either like they are today. I believe the first one came out in 2006 and cost an exorbitant amount of money. Either way, I know that Joey did not own a smartphone at all. Therefore, she didn't have access to the internet really at all and therefore couldn't have fallen prey to a predator or stalker from the internet is it possible i guess so but to me it's not really reasonable another theory to consider is that perhaps joey either purposefully or accidentally hurt the baby in some way and panicked the irony of the fact that the infant was found deceased in the bathtub didn't escape me as i went through all of this information remember the fight that kicked off the final argument between joey and alexis was because he accused her of trying to bathe the baby in a dirty sink and she flipped out and got really angry and kicked him out of her house. She then began giving him the silent treatment and disappeared. Was it a spite thing in the heat of the moment? Like, I'll show you, I'll bathe him in the tub. And she did something to the baby. Then after realizing what she had done was hiding out for a week or so and then to cover it up set the house on fire. Not really reasonable in my opinion either because remember she's like a young teenager and how in the world would she have been able to disappear completely and without a trace for all of these years now. 14 years later and still no sightings at all of Joey have ever been reported let alone confirmed or credible. Some people talked about her perhaps having hurt the baby due to postpartum depression or psychosis but there's absolutely no evidence at all to back that up and i want to reiterate that despite her irrational and immature decisions she did love her children very much and was considered by all accounts to be a wonderful mother which is also why i think she wouldn't have hurt lex and she wouldn't have left her girls could an accident have happened sure but i just don't think that's what we're dealing with here in my own opinion anyway if you guys think something else then please let me know in the comments below but let me know why you feel the way you do as well not just that you feel differently. Another thing to remember is how Joey's car kept appearing and disappearing in that entire time in the final days when nobody was able to get in contact with her. So was it Joey who was doing this? In my opinion, it had to have been someone who was not only comfortable driving her car or being in front of her house, but also someone who wouldn't stand out being around her house or in the neighborhood as well. To me, this could only really be one person besides her mom, and that's Alexis Brolin Jr. I'm about to get into why I'm so incredibly suspicious of this man in a minute, but I wanted to save that for last. 
there's really no way of ever knowing. And this is what frustrates me so much about this case. It's like what the actual hell went on here. The seat of the vehicle was also pushed back way further than if Joey had been, been the one driving it, at least the last time when it was abandoned, where it was found later on in the parking lot. She was a short woman. Someone much taller was driving the car when it was left there that day. Everything is just so incredibly confusing and frustrating. So Joey's car was eventually found. Three days after the fire, the police found the car parked several hours drive away in State College. In the same apartment complex where she and Alexis had lived some years before when they had the falling out about his son when Joey took the girls and moved to Virginia. That's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, who would know to park it there? What connection is there to this whole disappearance and fire to where Alexis and Joey used to live when they had the falling out? I have my own ideas about that too. So where they found the car and the fact that it kept disappearing and reappearing from out in front of her house leads me to what I need to say about Mr. Alexis Brolin Jr. Please understand he has not been charged with any crime relating to the death or disappearance of Joey and or the death of his infant son or the fire in question either. This is all my opinion, theory, and speculation on my part. In the interview I watched, he was crying, but it seemed only when he was talking about the death of Lex, not so much with Joey. It seems to me too that he moved on pretty damn quick from the relationship with Joey as he's remarried these days and was, as I said, quite fast for my tastes after this all took place. I was able to access his Facebook account last year when I first covered this story and even as of then people were just posting things on his wall like Joey question mark and but what about Joey Lynn question mark stuff like that. So I'm not the only one who seems to think he could be involved in some way. While investigating those closest to Joey, the police uncovered the fact that Alexis was in fact a felon and former drug addict. Joey had filed at least one protection from abuse order against him. Joey even went so far as to claim that his son from a previous marriage had been physically and sexually abusing one of her daughters, which had also been a part of the reason she had the child removed from the home. This is when Alexis and Joey finally separated and Joey moved to Virginia and even possibly why she moved back and was given her own home. Alexis was not invited to move back in despite the couple saying they were going to work things out and get married after the birth of their son. Keep in mind these were just allegations so I'm not saying his son was actually doing any of this or that Alexis was abusive toward Joey in any way. I'm simply stating what I found while researching theories. There was absolutely zero corroboration to these claims to the point where the disappeared episode didn't even mention any of this. I personally believe that all of these allegations and accusations against Alexis and his oldest son were a teenage girl's spitefulness and immaturity in trying to get full custody in order to move out of state with Alexis's daughter. This isn't to say I don't think Alexis is above suspicion here. Again, I'm only talking about this specific set of allegations. Here is where I get even more aggravated and frustrated, annoyed, and confused. Police have stated that, aside from his, quote, absolute refusal, end of quote, to take a polygraph test regarding the arson, death of Lex, and disappearance of Joey, Alexis Brolin Jr. is not a suspect in this case. This is weird to me because I've never seen any interviews or anything with him explaining or with any kind of explanation as to why he wouldn't take the lie detector test regarding this case. I know they are inadmissible and I also know they are just used as kind of a tool, but I'll pose this question to you. If they dug up that he's a felon and former drug addict, and I'm not saying either one of those things indicts him or makes him guilty, but hear me out. Those two things combined with the fact that he refused to cooperate and take the lie detector test, then how in the world could the investigators even make a statement like that publicly? How did they rule him out? I think that's a very bold statement for the investigators to make about a man who put himself at the scene multiple times. He waited about nine or 10 days before reporting her missing and he just happened to report her missing on the day his son's body was finally found. Did the baby succumb to dehydration after he did something to Joey and he just decided to start the fire? It's like, okay, she liked giving the silent treatment after arguments, but don't you want to see and spend time with your newborn son? Why and how did he let her not being available at all with their son go for such a long period of time? I would really like someone to explain the investigator's process of ruling people out in this investigation into a deceased infant and missing woman with special needs if all of these things, not to mention his volatile relationship with the victim and the last argument they had being about bathing their son, when that same baby was found in the bathtub of all places, then what is their criteria for ruling people out here if none of that makes him at all ever a suspect, which is what they said. Go ahead, I'll wait. 
why would you not want them to clear you and move along? Even though I guess he was cleared anyway, somehow. I don't know if I would even take a polygraph test because of how the police lie and stuff, but I'm not so sure. I guess you can never really know until you're in a situation like that. I also don't know what kind of felon Alexis was at the time or what his drug of choice was, but after some digging, I will say that I have an idea. The police actually stated, I almost forgot, other than his refusal, he was, quote, extremely cooperative and never considered a suspect, end quote. That's what I'm talking about here. How did they come to that point? Last person to see the victim alive. Had a fight with the victim the last time he saw her alive. Waited nine or ten days to report her missing. All of the stuff I had just mentioned to you. Where the car was found. The fact that the seat was pushed back to about his height. I mean, come on. I suppose that's where all of my confusion comes from here. I mean, do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Do you agree this is very strange at least? All right, moving on to some recent information I found while looking into Alexis, what he's up to these days. Ready for this? Well, hang on a minute because I have one more thing. If Alexis did do something to Joey in a rage or even by accident during one of their many violent fights, did he know he couldn't just leave with baby Lex and still claim to not have seen or heard from Joey? So he left the baby there and removed her body in some way, but then something happened and the little guy died while waiting for someone to go into the home and find him. I should have mentioned that earlier. Sorry, I'm going off the old video because this script was missing from my script library. So I had to rewrite it. And this was the very first true crime video I'd ever done, like I said, on my channel. And I was extremely slow and also all over the place. I did the best I could at putting the events in chronological order. And okay. This takes us to the recent news that I find incredibly suspicious about Alexis. A man named Alexis Berlin Jr. who is the same age and from the same town as our Alexis we've been speaking about this whole time. And I say that not because I believe it isn't him but because I couldn't find a photo of this guy. But I did find a co-defendant on our Alexis's Facebook page. So yeah, it's him guys. It's Alexis Berlin Jr., Joey's ex-fiance. So he was recently, as in last year arrested as part of a gigantic methamphetamine ring that was busted up by police. Putting this all together as he was a former drug addict, right? Could it possibly have been meth? Yes, uh, yes. This is a quote from an article about the bust from June of 2020. Quote, 38 people were arrested this week as federal, state, and local law enforcement officers broke up a major methamphetamine distribution ring in Clearfield County, U.S. Attorney Scott W. Brady said, in Johnstown. And, quote, blank, blank, I'm not going to give the guy's name, age 40, and Alexis Brolin Jr., 51 of Allport, Clearfield County, allegedly were the principal administrators, organizers, supervisors, and leaders of what Brady called the blank slash Brolin drug trafficking ring, end of quote. I wonder, was Alexis going to Joey's house because he was cooking something up there or used the guise of checking up on her as an excuse? Did she perhaps discover someone doing something like cooking drugs on her property and threatened to call the police so she had to be silenced? Was her alleged strange behavior reported by the neighbor who had that, quote, last confirmed sighting, end quote, of Joey when she wouldn't say hello and was just walking down the street, possibly with an empty stroller due to drug intoxication? Was she high, either accidentally because she was drugged or on purpose? Because we don't know anything and are speculating here and accidentally while under the influence hurt the baby and Alexis snapped and did something to her. Was Joey an innocent bystander and Alexis had a meth lab there and it was the explosion and some of the chemicals were possibly the quote unknown accelerant end quote which caused the blaze. Remember the neighbors heard an explosion. They did not just smell smoke or see fire. Also keep in mind this is all speculation and in the United States people are always supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and nobody has been charged with any crime involving what happened to Joey. Joey's mother and sister continue to search for her and for answers and justice in her case. That's all I have for you today, guys. Please let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed spending this time with me, please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any experiences with the supernatural and or paranormal that you would like for me to make a part of my listener encounter series, please feel free to email them to me at gemmajadeparanormal at gmail.com and I'll put them in a future video. Do me a favor, check out the description box for some important links. Justice for Caleb Smith. Check out the two-hour interview, as always, that Steve and I did with April Arrington. Get some more information there. Something moved in that live stream, and 
I just can't wait to get the podcast started. I know some people are losing faith and hope that that's going to happen, but believe me, it is not time. It has just has not been on our side. April, we love you. We will continue seeking justice for Caleb and helping you in any way we can. Sunday night fireside chats and Friday night's campfire stories, both from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time, both on Missing Persons and Mysteries, both with Stemma in the house, me and Steve Stockton. So check out links there or come into the live stream. And we have a newer live stream, newer, because I've been doing it for like three or four weeks now. On this channel, really doesn't have a title, but Steve and I decided last week we're going to go from seven to nine and we're going to do some Oracle reading. We went a little crazy and went almost four hours, but we got to figure out a system to do it for like an hour and a half during the two hour stream. So that's from seven to nine p.m. Eastern time right here on Gemma Jade on Wednesday nights. Guys, be kind to each other. It doesn't cost anything, can make you feel so good, gain you so much, but also make sure and take some time and be kind to yourselves. There's nothing wrong with self care, meditation, yoga. I love doing those things, especially chakra medication. That stuff is pretty fun and totally interesting. Excuse the setup. I am working on finding another space, not my office yet because we're nowhere near done with that, but another space that's a little bit bigger for me and I have a little bit more room to breathe and move. So you guys aren't subject to my sticky notes and the lamp over on that side, whatever, right? Also in the description box, there will be links for PayPal and Patreon if you want to make a financial donation to the channel and channel memberships coming very soon. I am working on it, guys, getting it done. Have your best day, have your best night, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.